Hello everyone and welcome. In today's project we'll be using a Java's graphical user interface package to create a calculator that can take strings as an input and also input from the buttons that you can push on the actual calculator. It is a great way to learn how to create graphical user interfaces that use action listeners in Java. Action listeners are really important because you have to track what the user is doing with your program. Okay, because the best way to learn is through projects, we'll take this code and explain it line by line so you get the full clarification. Let's dive right in. The first thing we're going to do is look at the setup. Okay, I'm using Eclipse IDE. You can, find the, you can find the link in the description, but you don't really have to use Eclipse if you're used to something else. Any IDE will work. Second thing I wanted to go over is the code. You can find the code in my GitHub in the description and follow along as I explain. When we're done, I recommend rewriting the code yourself because it is the best way to learn. So the next thing we're going to do is create a project. If you don't know how to do that in Eclipse, you go to File, new Java project and you name your project anything you want. I'll call it test project and you click next, include the model info and click finish. And now you have your test project which you can add classes and everything that. I already have everything set up in here and once you're ready you can unpause the video and follow along. So I'm going to open my calculator, Java, and I'm going to explain it. So the first thing, the first line we see here, we created a public class calculator and inside we're going to declare variables. So we have a private JFrame named frame and this is where you set the title. So basically, whenever you create a graphical user interface with Java Swing, you will need a container for your application. The frame, JFrame, is a base for all components, and you add those components to the frame. The second thing we're going to do is go over the text areas. So this one is for the user input, and this one is for the output. The reason I use the text areas is because I want the user to interact with the calculator and not just press the buttons and also enable the copy to result. So it is an interactable and editable component. The third line here is the image icon in the left corner. It's not really that important, but you can add anything you like. Now. I want you to get the feeling of what we're doing, so I'm going to show you what we currently have with these lines. I'm going to go to my test, and so this is line, these are the lines we have. This is a constructor in which we set the default close operation, so you can exit when you press the X button, is exit and close. We set the size, we set resizable to false layout to default and set visible. This is something usual which you do in every project. So you need to set default close operation. Maybe you don't want to exit and close but you have to set it. You have to set the size. Do you want the user to resize it and all of that. So now when we click the run we have this. We're back at our calculator. We know what it looks like when we add these lines and when we when we set the default operations. And now that we know what JFrame is and why it is important, we can move on to the buttons. They are also really important, but the process of creating them is kind of boring. So we create 10 buttons, each represents a single number that you can use on your calculator. And then we create operator uh, buttons. Oops. 
so divide times plus minus power to the power of root we create a clear button parenthesis and back button i put the equals button here because it's it's special button it's more important than the other buttons and that's it when it comes to declaring the variables that we're going to use so we are going to use all of those elements but our JFrame currently doesn't have anything on itself because we haven't added anything, we just declared it. It's really important for you guys to know what's going on at the every step of our program. I went to the test function, uh, text test class, and added the buttons, actually created the buttons. We haven't added them on the screen, so when you run the graphical user interface you actually don't see anything you only see the frame and that's it because the process of creation and adding something is not the same so now we come here we see the buttons but they're not on the screen the next thing we're going to do is add the buttons create the buttons create the size, create the position, and then add them to the screen. So we're going to go to the calculator. And as you can see, our buttons are right here. And we come to our public constructor called calculator that we are going to call from main. So everything in here will get called when we call the main. You already recognize this code. That is the same code from the R test function. You know it creates a blank container for our elements. This part is different, but we just change the colors. This is RGB, so you can create your own colors for the background. And now we set the size and the location of our text screen and the output screen. And when it comes to this part, I can't really help you. You have to create it yourself. You have to practice it and then you will get to know positions on the screen because every project is different every graphical user interface is different and there's just no way of me helping you here you have to test this part yourself and you have to play with it move around and i think it's the best way to learn so after adding this i'm going to skip some part of code and go to our button section so you actually see how the buttons are created but don't worry i will come back and explain the line by line okay so don't worry about this code i'll explain it later and we come here so it's our create buttons method and we're going to skip to it and here we are it's our create buttons method when which gets called it set the size and location of all our buttons and again I can't really help you with this part. You have to open the graphical user interface and move the buttons left, right, left, right, up, down, and see how the positions on the screen works. But this is how you set the size, and this is how you set the location on the screen. But we still haven't added them on the screen. And we do this for every button. We set the size and location, size and location. And you have to do that for every element that goes inside a container, as you can see. So they're usually the same size, but we just move them up and down, left and right. And that's it. That's what our create button method does. It creates the buttons, but we still haven't added them on the screen. So we come here. We went over this, so the function comes here, it skips, just like we did, to create buttons, it creates them, and then it comes back to creating action listeners. But this part we're going to cover last. The next thing we are going to co cover is adding objects to the screen, so you actually see what's going on. So we're going to skip to this method that adds the object to the screen and i split this in few parts because it makes the code easier to read this is how this is the syntax for adding objects to the screen so we have our frame name 
that's our J-frame that we created the first. It's blank. It's currently just the gray area. And we first. It doesn't matter in which order you add them. It, it matters what's the size and what's the position. And remember, we created that here. So now we come here, adding objects to the screen. And we add the text screen, output screen, and all the buttons and the image. So it, nothing special about this method. You don't even have to have that method, but I added it so it makes the code more real readable. And as you can see, you just have to manually add every element. And now they will appear on the screen, And but they still won't do anything. The part where they actually do anything is in create action listeners. But before that, I want to show you our calculator how it actually looks right now okay and at the end you add frame set visible to true you add it at the end because you first want to add the elements and then set the frame visible so it actually repaints and you see everything if this wasn't here I'll, our calculator would be bugged as you will see so this is the calculator we currently have and the buttons don't do anything. This is how we arrange the elements. You can change. I encourage you to change the order of elements. But this is the graphical user interface we have now, and it doesn't do anything. The part where it actually does something is here. But before that, I want to show you what happens if you don't put this last. So if you first put the frame to visible and then you create the buttons. As you can see, it's bugged and you have to go over it for it to repaint and you will never even see the, the text area. So that's why it's important to, to put frame set visible to true the last, as you can see also in the comments. Okay, before we actually add the functionality to our buttons, I just want to make sure that everything is clear to you. So the first step of creating the graphical user interface is to create a frame. You create a frame like this, and then you have a container where you can put your elements. Then you're usually going to create your elements. You're going to know what goes inside, and you create them under that. So you create whatever you need, whether it's a text, text screen, output screen, image, buttons, whatever. You create them, but they're not on the screen. They're currently not on the screen. So you have an empty container. And then you come here. This is the process of actually adding the elements and adding the container to your screen. So you set the size you set the current default things you're always going to have to set exit and close you don't even have to do exit and close you can do um, hold on. exit and close you can do hide and close you can do there are a lot of options but usually you're going to do exit and close maybe you want it to be bigger maybe you want it to be resized but after creating your elements you're going to have to set the default default standard things once you do that you're going to have to create the size and the location of every element which we do here and then you're going to have to add them on the screen so once you got everything set up you add them on the screen and then when you see them on the screen, you can arrange them left to right, left to right. And switch them up however you need. The last part, which we're going to cover now, is adding the functionality to your buttons. But this is, this is the part to do last. Because first you have to have an interface that works for you. So now we come to this part. It's creating action listeners. It's a method that creates something that tracks the user's movement with the mouse. 
so this is uh, this is how we do it we skip to that part okay so we are at our uh, method create action listeners and this is what they do we create action listeners that add text to the screen it is here to make program more readable again you don't have to create those methods but if you want to improve your readability i recommend you doing that so what we're going to do now is we're going to create an action listener so basically what it does it you you put it on a button like this so button 10 this is for number nine add action listener new action listener and then this is the method that gets executed when you press the button so this is the usual syntax the part what you change is here action performed so when you when the user clicks the button this gets executed so when you click the button we put nine on the text screen when we push this button we put eight when we push this button we put seven how you add text to the screen is like this text screen it's our upper screen append and then text so basically now we're adding functionality to our buttons every button does something so when you press a button this gets added on the screen when you press this button this gets added to the screen and it's really important for you to understand this concept of action listeners because they are default in every graphical user interface application you're going to have to track what the user does and how you do that is by action listeners and these are all same for our buttons and now we come to divide button uh, multiply button and again they don't do anything but add the text to our screen so we can go over all of them and they just add the text to our screen the part where we calculate something will be covered last okay this is our remove button it's a bit different it checks the length of the text on the screen and if it's different than zero then it removes uh, one one character but essentially what they do is just add the text on the screen it can do anything it can i don't know close the program when you press the button but in our calculator example we just want to add text on the screen and now the interesting part is the part i skipped it is right over here so this is the part I skipped and the reason I put the equals button here is because it's different from every other button okay the equals button is special button so what happens when you press the equals button what do we have to do we have to read the user's input and somehow evaluate it so we assign an action listener to our equals button like this like any other element and then you see we add it here and then we come to a method that it does when it's clicked so you push the equals button and this happens we try to do this and then if it doesn't work we catch the exception so let's go to the try block so we try to evaluate the text from the text screen we take the input so this is how you take the input from the text screen that we created so you get the text it's a string it returns a string and then we call the evaluate function method on that text our evaluation is here it's a code I took from internet it's already a done code that takes uh, strings and calculates the value so you can find this online you can take it here I found it on Stack Overflow it's an open source project created by a Stack Overflow user so it's a public code for evaluation of math expressions from text I'm not going to go over this it's 
uh, far more complex than creating a graphical user interface but essentially it takes a string as an input and then evaluates it by by using something called a recursion so basically we come here to our calculator we call the evaluation method on our screen on our text screen so we take the input evaluate it and put it in a variable double x so this is the part where we check if we are dividing by zero because it's infinity in Java and we don't want to do that on our calculator we want to say division by zero is not allowed and then if this happens if x, x equals to this this or this we just print division by zero is not allowed and if not we just put our output that we have here so we have a double variable called x we convert it to string and then we set it on our output screen okay let me remind you this is what we currently have the buttons now actually do something they add something on the screen this is our input and this is our output so when you press the buttons now they actually do something you can clear you can put this you can put it back you can add this okay and then what we do is we print the x here so i'm going to go over the process it does so let's say we write 8 divided by 2 and we press the equals button so i press the equals button it's 4 this is the part that gets evaluated so we come here we try to do this the our method evaluates it to 4 it stores it in x we check if we divide it by 0 we didn't we go to else block in here we set it to our output screen as you can see here this is that part and we print it in our console so basically this is how calculator work works our calculator is now finished and you can play with it you can do all sorts of things as you can see it works for everything and the last thing we're going to cover is this catch exception so what happens if the user mistypes something so let's say this and this is a string that can't be evaluated so as you can see you write invalid input please try again we do that in this part so if the try block doesn't work we throw an exception and that exception is caught here catching any exception printing it on the screen so this is the message we write on the screen and this is the error that caused that message to be printed and that's pretty much it about the calculator it's not as hard as it seems but it's really important to grasp the basic concepts of graphical user interface and then it really becomes a simple task all you have to do is add the buttons the buttons have to add the text on the screen but because we put the text screen here you can also type it on your keyboard as you can see it works when you use your keyboard as well and that's it i want to congratulate you on creating your calculator in java this uh, may be a big thing for beginners because it's really important to learn through projects once again i want to congratulate you on creating your calculator in java this is a really important step of your programming path the graphical user interface is really cool you can create games you can create calculators you can create unit converter that i already created and will be covered in a different video you can find this code and all my projects on my github repository the link will be in the description and i hope everything is clear to you if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and I will try to clarify the code. But I went line over line, so everything should be clear. But don't worry if it isn't, feel free to ask in the comments.
And that is it for today. I encourage everyone to download the code and play with it yourself. It is the best way to learn. It's really important for you to rewrite this code because you will get nothing if you just watch the video. And play with it. Add a new function to this calculator. Change the background color. Change the order of buttons. Try something different and uh, let me know how it goes. See you. Thank you.